What is going on YouTube? This is Mighty Comics and Collectibles, and this is Arcade 1UP Mod Final Fight Edition. So guys, this is my final fight cabinet that I've been working on. I, I know I did a video about a month ago showing you my punch out cabinet. But I, I wanted to do a horizontal screen mod on one of these arcade one-ups, and I uh, chose the Final Fight cabinet. Uh, my wife uh, picked this up for me for Christmas, and uh, for I think she got a good deal on it. I don't know. You'd have to ask her. But uh, either way, put this bad boy together, uh, decided to mod it so I can put uh, a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus in it, and then load a 128 gig image. So let me show you guys what I did. The first simple mod that I decided to do for this cabinet is throw some red electrical tape on the, I guess the the outside of the cabinet uh, along the uh, the lining. You could see this one actually came out a lot better than my punch out cabinet did, and I'm thinking maybe because I didn't add any artwork to the side or to the bezel or to any other the other parts, I just went stock and just added the actual electrical tape, and I actually think it came out pretty good. Uh, you guys let me know what you think. Uh, the stock Marvel Super Heroes cabinet next to, I'm not going to touch, at least not yet, uh, until I find out um, what I want to do with it. But either way, like I said, I did a vertical mod for the punch out. I wanted a horizontal mod so I can play those games. And this is the cabinet that I chose to do. So as you can see, the control deck is missing. Uh, I don't have it yet. Uh, what I decided to do, since I didn't want to do my own, I actually bought one from Tulsa Arcades. They had just shipped it out as of today. And then of course I will add the buttons, the joysticks and everything else. And I'll probably do a video on that showing you what I did as well. But either way, this bad boy is playable. So let me show you what else I did. So another thing that I did was uh, mod the back tour to the Ar Arcade 1UP cabinet. As you can see, there was a stock hole here that I actually have made bigger. Uh, if anybody purchases a Canon kit off of Amazon or from anywhere else, it actually comes with a power on and off button, uh, which doesn't actually fit through the stock hole. So what I did was I, I made the hole a little bit bigger, uh, configured it so I can use the on and off button outside so I don't have to keep going in and out to turn it off the Raspberry Pi. Um, I also was able to fit my extension cord outside of that hole to just plug it right into the um, electrical outlet and it works great. I'm gonna go ahead and open this up and show you guys what I did to the inside. So I've gone ahead and removed the door to show you guys what I've actually done. As you can see, my uh, LCD converter board I have plugged in there. Um, again, I got this off of Amazon. All you gotta do is find out what model screen you have. And as you can see, the M170ETN01 space one is my screen model number that came with the final fight. I'm not one of those guys who's gonna throw in like a huge different monitor. Um, I'm okay with the stock one. That's no big deal to me. Uh, it actually looks kind of nice when I fire it up and show you guys what it looks like. I think you'll agree. But either way, I'll work my way down um, to show you what else I have done. Again, I have not like taped anything down for the most part. My wires are everywhere, but uh, this is still a work in progress, but I wanted to show you guys what I have so far. So the first thing you're going to see is my uh, breaker bar here that I have uh, double-sided tape down here like ETA Prime did. And everything is plugged into that. And then I said the nice uh, extension cord will plug out of that hole in the back. So uh, I have a uh, cheap $15 amp that I bought off of Amazon, which I said is not hooked up yet. I'll probably put it over here because I still need to hook it up to the uh, actual speakers and then install the speakers to where they're going to go as well. Um, I'm using two SNES uh, bootleg controllers that I also got off of Amazon for $12 and change for uh, two of them. And of course, my Raspberry Pi, which I have double-sided taped along to the side right here, which allows me, one, to use this on and off switch coming out of the back, nice and convenient. And of course, the HDMI out up to the LCD controller board. Uh, one thing I did want to show you guys is that, as you can see right there, is it a stock speaker from the Final Fight that I unscrewed from the actual control deck. What my plan is, and I'm going to show you this, is let me come around the back here, the front, I mean, actually. What I'm going to do is this piece right here, this actually comes out. What I plan on doing is 
I had ordered from Tulsa Arcades another one of these pieces. Actually, the uh, speakers coming, the speaker holes are actually in this already. So what I plan on actually doing is taking those speakers, screwing them into either side, to both sides of this piece, and then hooking it up to the actual amp itself. I do have another speaker, another stock speaker that I took out of my Asteroids machine. Not my Asteroids, my Space Invaders machine, excuse me, which became my punch out. And, and that's the other speaker I'm going to use. And like I said, I will be plugging that into the amp and it works just fine. Um, I think it will look great once everything's inside, you know, taped up, wired up, you know, in its place and where it's supposed to be. So that's really all I did. The only other thing that I did was download an image uh, off of Arcade Punks. It's a 128 gig image with kind of almost every game you could want. I will uh, hook it up and show you guys exactly what it looks like in just a minute. Hang right there. All right, guys. So now I'm going to go ahead and show you some of the gameplay and the image in case anybody is interested in downloading this image. Unfortunately, I forgot the actual name of it, but I will post a description. I will post in the description of the actual image I use. Like I said, it is a 125 gig image and it has a ton of games on it. So... One thing I wanted to note was that right now I'm using these SNES controllers, which is fine. But uh, once my control panel comes, I still plan on using these for occasional games. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this picture right now from I'm getting from Tulsa Arcades. And you can see there's an extra hole uh, underneath the six button configuration. And that hole I'm going to actually use on each side to, uh, to bring these SNES controllers out and through that. Uh, and hopefully maybe mount them underneath here or on the side with maybe some uh, some plastic holders or something like that. At least that's the plan. And when I uh, when I do that, I will show you guys in a video uh, on how I put together the control deck and then of course the finished product once I get to it. So either way, let me go in the back, turn on the button and hopefully this thing will fire right up. Like I said, uh, this thing actually will give you different uh, displays once it loads up. There you go. It's firing up. Let's see which one it gives us this time. Some of them are awesome. Some of them are very plain. So this one is Phil's Doodles, which I've never heard of. So that is actually pretty cool. It's like a, a play on Marvel. From someone like me, you guys know I'm an awesome comic book collector. That is pretty special. So like I said, it'll load Retro Pie and we'll go into Emulation Station. And what a fitting one uh, to show considering this is a comic book channel most of the time. And it'll finish loading and bring the game up, bring Emulation Station up and then load a game. We're gonna go right into uh, one of my all-time favorites and that's Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. Oh, look at that. It's even playing the Mike Tyson's Punch-Out music. I did not plan that. That is just doing it on, on its own. Like I said, it, it'll it pick whatever it wants to pick and it'll constantly change, which I think is cool. And that speaker is actually pretty loud, and it's only one, one speaker. Uh, and there, there will be two when I'm done, so I can imagine how loud this thing's going to be. So, as you can see, the uh, the actual goes to favorites, it goes to last played, arcade, or it goes through the whole list. So I'm going to go right to NES, and we'll head down to Mike Tyson's Punch-Out!! Which, of course, is one of my favorites. And the longer you hold it, it'll bring up the letters. So you can kind of get where you need to go quickly. Um, like I said, you can add any games you want to your favorites list, like like all retro pies. To me, like I think that's a lot easier than cycling through all this stuff. But either way, we're here. Controllers have been configured already. And here you go. You get the loading screen for the system that you want to play. And the game will load. I will say this this um, emulation 
image has really been fantastic. A lot better than the uh, Mr. Burns that I'm running on my ver my uh, vertical mod. And we'll start it and I will pass off the controls to my buddy here, ready to play a game. So Rai, if you remember, left, right, and the start button is the super punch. You ready? Okay. Now, like I said, this guy playing this game is almost eight, so he's not the greatest punch out player yet, but he is getting better. And you can see some of the gameplay. Um, lightning quick, no delay, no lag. Uh, just just a really good image in my opinion. And some of these, these ROMs are just actually perfect. So I'm gonna zoom out and show you guys the rest of the cabinet. Uh, like I said, I didn't mod everything. Uh, I just put some electrical tape, left the stock cabinet where it was, and I think it actually turned out pretty nice. To recap, on and off switch comes with a can of kit if you buy a can of kit. If not, I, I see guys all the time, you know, putting their own in their stock in their stock machines. Um, for me, I just thought this was a simple solution. Um, I always do shut down the machine through RetroPie, regardless, just to uh, be safe, and, and I'll start up the game using the, uh, the power button. So, this is Mighty Comics and Collectibles. I hope you enjoyed this video. Look for my next one, doing the, uh, the mod on the control deck itself. Uh, I plan on putting the buttons and joysticks and the speakers together inside the, the panel on the front. So, uh, if you haven't done so already, uh, subscribe to this channel. Like this video if you like it, and I will talk to you guys soon.